when you are and when you're not. Smooth and incredible, but we're so incredible. It's ready when you are and when you're not. Oh, we're ready when you are and when okay. you're not. And then I'm kicking go. my foot. Oh, okay. That's what I knew. And I just was saying it to myself. And then they chimed in and began to like, Rape me because they ain't heard the commercial I heard. Okay, we ain't heard that y'all, and, right. and, and that's how we had to start the show because we still had the giggles, the giggle gut, mm -hmm. and we had to let y'all know why we had the giggle gut because Robin's still sitting over there tickled as shit yeah. because she's like, I don't know, Sid, to just make nothing up. Come on. Okay, so it had to be real. It had to be real. How you doing, Daddy? I'm wonderful, Mama. How about yourself? I'm wonderful, baby. Awesome. We ready to have the show? Let's rock and roll. What's the topic today? Tell them. Bullying. In Hollywood, it's not just a schoolyard problem. No. Come on, we got to talk about it, y'all. We got to talk about it. Because it's going on. And what is the definition for bullying? What is the definition? Well, I think it, it, it depends upon who's saying it. But most people would say someone picking on another individual for no reason and with the assumption that they can beat them. And that's why they do it. Mm. Bullying. And, you know, we see it oftentimes in the news, how our children were bullied. And what do you tell your child if they face a bully? Stand up to the bully. Never let a bully push you around because if you let him push you around one time, he'll be around to see you a second time. Right. And Stand again and again and again. So we tell our Never children, allow don't allow anyone to bully. Right. right. I believe Keenan Ivory Wayne said uh, some years ago about his, uh, when he was a kid, his, uh, the neighborhood bully was picking on him. And he went in and told his father that the neighborhood bully was picking on him. And his father said, go back out there and fight him or either fight me. And then he said he had to whip his father's ass. Okay. Because he was not going back okay. out there to now, fight that bully. Okay. okay. In living color. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, bullies can be very scary. And I don't mean to get off subject, but now you know why that was a funny family. Because <laughs> right. when you can whip your father's ass, <laughs> right. ain't nothing but jokes at the dinner table. Do my homework, nigga. Do my homework, nigga. You do it. Right. Before I slap the shit out of you. I didn't think he went that far, but I, he just didn't want to <laughs> fight that gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, bullying in Hollywood. And, you know, I just read what someone put. Well, Monique, they said that you are the bully. And. Can I answer that? Yes, Daddy. In judiciary, people speak in reference to bullies who get bullies. And what happens is, if you're saying that she will bully a bully because she's going to stand up to him, yes. But if you notice. She ain't say nothing about your mama. <laughs> in addition to that, if you notice, she didn't. She didn't go after the young lady who was on the reel, who made a comment about her. No, she's speaking about Oprah Winfrey, Lee Daniels. She's speaking about juggernauts who impose themselves. And with the Me Too movement, see what people have to understand is that this is about more than this just sex. This is about the power and the ability to force individuals to impose their will on you and make you do things that you're not obligated to do. And then it's done so repetitively that we as the public begin to normalize that. Mm. Or we in Hollywood begin to normalize that. And then it's hidden in cold words that Lee Daniels used, such as she's got to learn how to play ball. What does that mean? Because no one has ever asked him articulate that exactly. What do you mean? Come on. So what happens is there are a lot of things that are said in private where the bullying goes on and it has nothing to do with the physical. It has to do with the social and the financial. So what happens is there are a lot of things that are life or the illusion of. And what happens is people will ridicule the technique of the self-defense, but they're not focusing on the fact that there was self-defense that needed to be applied in the first place. That would be the equivalent of someone trying to rob you. You take a bat and bust them in the head. And then Steve Harvey shows up and said, Mo, did you have to bust them up in the head with the stick, Mo? Did you have to bust them up in the head? As opposed to saying, did he have to rob you? See, when you rob somebody and you bust them up in the head, 
they get what they deserve. Come on. You know, when I, I read some of the comments in the room and we're talking about bullying and one young lady keeps putting, but it's Oprah, but it's Oprah. And I had a show last weekend in, um, where were we? In Oxnard, California. And we were speaking about inequality and you know, we were having a real conversation. And when Oprah's name came up, this young lady put her hands over her mouth like, don't you talk about God? And then once we got all the way through it, she took her hand down like, I'm embarrassed that I put my hand up. Because when you say, but it's Oprah, Oprah does the same things we do. She bleeds, she breathes, and one day she's gonna expire. Now, if she does any of those things differently, then maybe I should be shaking in my boots. Well, maybe it's part of the problem where we create the problem because by her being a flesh and living person who I believe has a good soul at the heart of who she is, it's just that along the way, the business can make you lose sight of what's most important, and that's the people. The people are the one that you're performing for. The people are the one that are tuning into the show that makes her viable in the first place. So you begin to cater and pander to the people and oversight of what's most important. But look, and that's the nuances which are your life, the one that you're and you life. fail to be the person the in private life that you portray yourself to be in public life. See, when we're talking about bullying in Hollywood, and it's interesting, and, and first we want to say, Thank you to the brothers and sisters that are saying we stand for what's right. Thank you. It has no color. It has no gender. We're just standing for what's right. So we thank y'all. For the brothers and sisters that are saying, well, what's, what's, what's the deal? Why are we doing this? Because that word in all caps is bullying. And do you know how long we've been bullied? We've been bullied for so long. Like Sid said up front, we normalize it. And then we look at the person that says, wait a minute, baby, you keep pushing me. And I'm getting ready to push you back. We look at them and say, how can you push back? Are you stupid? How can you push back? Are you stupid? So, and, and I want to address this, Daddy, because all of it ties in together. Mm -hmm. But when you have a journalist, and I want to respect this brother's title, a journalist by the name of John Mary. And he's putting out information that's not true. Not only is it not true, I've said to John Murray, please prove what you're saying. And he's making all of these statements. And, and now he's saying Monique was offered $3 million from Netflix, but she had to audition. If that's not bullying, I don't know what it is. Or an attempt at. Because I won't face you. Mm -hmm. I'll just say it, and then I'll walk away from it. Mm -hmm. That's why we had to put out the offer that Netflix did send. And then we also had to put out the follow-up email when we did say to them, hey guys, go back and come back with your best number. And then if y'all swipe over, you see them saying, we met up again and we pretty much, we're gonna keep it where it was. Well, it wasn't us saying to them, come back with your best number, because to be exact, what they said to us was, let us come back with you because of the points that were made. And in addition to that, I liken what we're going through as a boycott is not designed to be angry and hateful at Netflix, but to awaken them and say, you cannot explain why you do not have a black, woman or a woman of color over 40 because there's another part of it there's that ageism too where they're not looking at women plus 40 who have had tenure in the business and there's a level of reward that you give to individuals for tenure yes I, I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunate i can't call her names perhaps somebody in the room can but there was a white actress recently who had been on a show uh, for 14 years, and she did a, 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 a interview, I believe, in Vanity Fair, where she spoke about the $20 million deal that she just received, and she spoke about the tenure that was associated. Well, she was correct, but what we're saying is we would like to be measured by the same yardstick that other individuals are measured by, despite the color that we, we are, and when you have a John Mary, who someone in the room earlier said, it seems as if he's angry. What happens is, 
I think you can't be any more clear. And Monique said to John Mary, if you can prove that I got a $3 million offer, I will get out of the business. I will retire. I will quit the business. What I would say is, if you are real with yours and not fake news, will you quit the business when I provide the emails indicating what Netflix came back and said? Now, Monique never got a response from him. And the emails have now been posted so that you can clearly see them. Not only that, we had a, 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 a remarkable brother, you know, one of many that we run into along our journeys, name was Shaw Richie. Yes. Who has posted uh, from, what is that? Rolling out, okay from, yeah. Rollingout.com. Rollingout.com. John Mary tried to uh, say that there were some emails leaked from, leak, uh, from Will Packer where I allegedly was asking him for money for Monique's performance. And what happens is, y'all know what they say. You can't keep getting away with a lie because it's too much covering up that you have to do. And all I'm saying to y'all, to the astute observers, Monique keeps showing up, but we're the people who are against her. You hear the remnants of him saying, uh, Tyler Perry said this, and Oprah would never work with her again, and all of that. But why haven't you seen Tyler, Oprah, or anyone speak in reference to that? And I'm telling you, it's not because people are so poised that they don't want, want to uh, challenge that with an answer. They won't even, uh, no. It's because she's telling the truth, guys. And there's a fear of just simply saying, we're sorry. See, we're speaking up about it, but we would forgive them. Come on. We would forgive them for making a mistake. We would forgive them. And we still love them despite the mistakes that they made. I'm not going to talk bad about Oprah and say, see, what my wife can say on stage, she's a comic and she's saying what you can say on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's saying what people would want to say. But when we're off, there's a level of decorum as the other half Come on. that I'm compelled to have and which you can read in those letters because my baby is fire. That's the same time. And desire. And desire. Mm. I'm a Libra. So it's that balance. But at the end of the day, the bullying that we're talking about is hidden behind smiles. It's hitting behind smiles. And I want to address something in the room. And, I'll, and I know I've addressed it before because when you hear the reports out there that it's Monique's husband that's ruining her career, I want us to address it. Because when you do see the letter that's posted at rollingout.com and you do see the response that he gave to Will Packer from a letter that Will Packer sent to uh, Sydney, an email. And when he does respond, and then Will Packer disappears, to never respond again. Because how do I respond to the truth? And the reason why people, I understand why people would say, oh, he's ruining her career because we don't see Monique out, out there like we see the other ones. Well, the one thing we're not paying attention to is we already know that black actresses and actresses of color, we receive lowball offers. Well, once the lie and the rumor was put out there that Monique was difficult and demanding and her husband was difficult. Well, of course, we ate that lie up and then we allowed the lie to become the truth. Mm -hmm. And the people we keep naming, those three people all said, y'all are right. They all said it. So that's why we have to keep bringing it up and keep speaking out because when will those people say, we told that woman and her husband to go and promote that movie, whether you had an obligation or not, I would have just took the family and went. And then she says, well, listen, I have a son named Shalom that I was on the red carpets. I did everything that they asked me to do and more. 
and now I don't have a relationship with my son. Will you begrudge me if I choose my family over fame? I know I'm up for an award, but are you going to be mad at me because the awards that she speaks about now are the awards that were given to her and the awards that she said she would not lie before? Because what she told Lee Daniels from the gate, if we can save one person with this movie and let them get an insight as to what happened, we win it. Lee Daniels was in it for the awards and he said it from the gate. Humbly, from just an outside observer on the inside, it appeared because that night his name was not called in conjunction with the conversation that Monique had with him lobbying for him to give the proper credits as a producer that he was supposed to give to another black woman that he tried to take away and she said this is not right lee and lee had a relationship with her for 20 years prior to monique even knowing her so when you have to stand up for somebody who has a relationship what's our girl lisa cortez when you got to stand up for sister lisa cortez and she's had a relationship with a man for 20 plus years what you think you got coming not a goddamn. And here's the thing, because I love when people say, oh, well, now Monique, she's playing the victim. Y'all haven't they tag black women with that forever? Come on. The moment we speak up and speak out, oh, you're now the victim. Oh, you're now an angry black woman. Well, listen, as my husband says, and as I agree, shouldn't we be? Shouldn't we be angry and not the angry we want to ball up our fists and go out in the street and take off our earrings and put on Vaseline in our face and say, bitch, come on. No, not that kind of angry. I'm 50 years old, y'all. I'm too damn old for that. But the kind of angry that says I have to speak up and speak out. We have to. That's how angry we should all be. So when we begin to question, why would you speak up? Why would you speak up? Why would you? I know. What you're saying is right. And see, this is where for me, daddy, it does get disheartening. Because when you do have Oprah Winfrey, what you're saying is right. That's her quote. When you do have Tyler Perry saying, what you're saying is right. When you do have Lee Daniels saying, what you're saying is right. When you do have brother Steve Harvey saying, what you're saying is right. But then they come with the real quiet undertone but don't say nothing we know that you're right but why are you speaking up because history shows you that those who care most about their people don't get to reap the rewards are you sure that you want to do that with your life mm. and <clears throat> The spirit is on. Come on, baby. What I'll say is when you've been given a life assignment, it doesn't matter what someone else said. Mm. It doesn't matter about the scrutiny you're going to receive. You've been given a life assignment by the universe that says before you even got here, you would be in this place where you're dealing with folks. You, we already knew it. We knew it as children. And we would be in a place where we had to speak up because as children. He just cool. I'm like, bro. He's calling you a jigaboo on the hush. Like, what are you doing? Oh, man, you tripping. So I guess the Libra in me, the scales of justice. It makes you say, why y'all scared to love yourself? Come on, baby. Why? I want, I want us to sit in there for a second. Why are we scared to love ourselves? Because when people question my management, see my management, it's a black man named Sidney Hicks and our attorney is a black man named Ricky Anderson. And those two men negotiated the biggest deal of my career. Now I wanna share this with y'all. See, I've had 
the biggest white agency. And when I first got to Hollywood, somebody said to me, how did you get with them? Well, I didn't know the magnitude of who they were. So I was like, bitch, they called me. And, and I went and met. That's all I knew. I didn't know. I've had the biggest management company. I've had the biggest Hollywood attorney. And all of them. And my Hollywood attorney was a black woman. All of them would say to me, Mo, we're going to get them the next time. And this is after the Parkers is a hit. We're going to get them the next time, Mo. Well, why can't we get them this time, y'all? After the first season, that show was through the roof. Well, we got to wait to the second season. So you've always, I've always been told, we're going to get them the next time. Now I'm going to speed it up. See, when people question my management, I understand it because what my management is not willing to do is to say, we'll accept these low ball offers and we'll keep our fingers crossed for a next time. My management is saying, no, if you ask them out to dinner, God damn it, you got to pay for it. You can't invite her to Golden Corral and then tell us y'all going Dutch. That's what my management is saying. No angry money. Come on, baby. Now, when you hear that sister Jessica Chastain had to go to bat for sister Octavia Spencer. Now, for those of you who may not know who these women are, Jessica Chastain is our white sister in Hollywood who's talented as hell and who was courageous enough to say, I got to take a stand. It's unfair that these black actresses are getting paid so low. So what I'm willing to do is share my money with this black woman so I can make sure it's not on my conscience that I'm looking this woman eye to eye and I know I'm getting paid triple, if not more than she is. And we applaud Sister Chastain for that. Now, Je Jessica has been nominated for an Oscar twice. She had to go fight for Octavia Spencer, who's won the Oscar award. Now, when you pull up both of their resumes, Octavia Spencer has double the work than Jessica. So nobody's saying, well, who was Octavia's management that another actress had to go in and fight for fairness. Where was that team of people? Now, I can't take it personal because I had a team of people and those team of people kept saying to me, we're going to get him on the next one. We're going to get him on the next one. You want to take it to the lines, love? Let's take it to the lines, baby. Hey, my love, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you calling from? Hi, Auntie and Uncle. This is Israel. Hey, We're baby. Ready. You know what? I'm going to stand by y'all regardless. Uh, you know what? People have to realize and have to understand that Rosa Parks, okay, what they keep saying is for me, when we keep being selfish, and it's, it's all about her money, it's all about her, it has to start with you. And then it blossoms and metastasizes into something else. I don't understand why they can't see this picture for what it is. Rosa Parks didn't say, you know what? I'm going to get on this bus. I'm gonna sit down and I'm not gonna and and I'm not going in the back because I want our people to know. She said, damn it, I'm tired and I'm sitting down. Come on. It thought it was her. Okay? And then after that, it blossomed and it metastasized into everybody else. And it became a we should get together because someone started it. But don't think for a second that folks weren't calling those apart the fool. You crazy girl. You but no, this time when you went to jail and you, you have no idea. We don't know how many people have done that to her, even her own family and friends. Yes. Don't think how your husband was, you know, was lifted and, and hoisted up in the air and everybody, yeah, we got the like, No. No, like you always say, Auntie, you preach it, yeah, have a pencil. Because some fool, some house nigga, is gonna go back and say, you know what, we ain't happy where we is. Mm -hmm. So, they got in trouble. Mm -hmm. They got to go ahead and tell Massa, no, we got to kill y'all ass because we're trying to get out of here. We're not all in the house, all up in the field. And we don't like it. Come on. We're watching our own family members become raped and, and mutilated and killed. While well, you in there saying, Motisa, we out here getting killed. So, no, we, we want to get away. If you want to stay, you go ahead and do that. But don't stop us. Come That's on. the problem. I'm reading on Twitter where, 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 where people are trying to stop 
and and put the blame on 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 um, Uncle Sydney. And, oh yeah, it's not management. It's this. It's, no, if you mm. you don't see what the big picture is, the big the big picture is and has always been standing together, always together, backwards and never. Why can't they see this? And I understand, Uncle, when you say. You know, Frazy was not far away, so someone's got to catch up. Well, damn it. Let's smash some tomatoes and catch up. Come on now. Come on. We love you, baby. Thank you. See, <laughs> thank you for all those. <laughs> My baby got to breathe. You got to breathe. You know, if, if I can piggyback on what she was saying, because when you have people that are saying, and they have people saying, Monique is crazy. What mommy doing? But but didn't you tell them already that we was off? Yeah, I didn't, they ain't lying. Go back and like, the podcast. We are off our rocker. I done told y'all from time to time I'm 49. Come not on. 5150. Sometimes I'm 49. Sometimes I don't even touch the 50 mark. Let me say this. Okay. Tell them. I'm gonna tell them, Daddy. <laughs> See, lately I've been watching some of our sisters in history that had to stand. And when you pull up the pictures of Harriet Tubman, you don't see a slew of black women standing behind her, nor do you see a slew of black men. When you pull up Fannie Lou Hamer, you don't see a slew of us standing with her. I'm not saying none of us did, you don't see the masses. When you pull up Shirley Chisholm, and I talked about this before in one of our podcasts. I was embarrassed one night laying up in a hotel room in New York. And I had no idea that this black woman was the first woman to run for president. I had no idea that she was such a strong, outspoken woman. And she didn't give a fuck if you didn't like what she was saying. I had no idea who she was. But again, I did not see a slew of us standing behind her. So when you go back in our history and you see that there were these sisters that had to stand up and speak out. You don't see a lot of us standing behind them. And it brings me back to John Mary. If you know Hattie McDaniel's history, and for the sister that's gonna do that project, baby, I say go get it, cause it's overdue. There was a man named Walter White. And Walter White single-handedly tried to destroy this black woman because he felt like she was worthless. And he felt like that she was the mammy and we were tired of seeing those images. And he was gonna make it his mission to shut this woman down. And when you find out Hattie McDaniel's history, he did a damn good job of it. And he had people believing that this woman was washed up and no good and, and he had to introduce the new nigga, which was Lena Horn. That was no fault of Lena Horns, but when you just know the history, John Mary is starting to feel like to me, the modern day Walter White. Because I don't know this man. I met this man one time in an intimate setting and that was in the back of a limousine with Kim Whitley when we were in Washington DC years ago. And when she introduced this man to me, she said, this is my boy, John Mary. She didn't say this is John Mary, a gossip columnist. She didn't say this is John Mary, be careful what you're saying. And around that time, see, I'm gonna go personal with y'all. Around that time, that's when I wanted Gerald LaVert to be my boyfriend, okay? I was, I was gonna get him to be my boyfriend. So I'm in this limousine and I'm sharing open information about me and Gerald's conversations. And, Cause if you say he cool, Kim, he cool. Well, a month later, I see some of that conversation in Sister to Sister magazine. And I was never able to put it together because I didn't think that my friend Kim would put me in a position where you got me in front of a gossip columnist. After that, I've never had a moment with this man, John Mary, again. But when I go back and I think about Hattie McDaniel's life and that this one man who happened to be a light-skinned man went after this, who happened to be a darker skinned woman, who was a big woman, he went after this woman with such a vengeance that it hurt her internally because she couldn't understand it. She couldn't understand what's your gripe with me. So when I watch these videos of John Mary and I watch this brother pull out a list 
of all of these people and companies that don't work, won't, they won't work with Monique anymore. And the CEO of BET said that was his worst experience, or that was their worst experience ever. Now, what he doesn't understand is, and I hate to cut you off, that when you say that, we're going to ask, who's the CEO of BET that told you that? Because what would happen is we would like to have that on record and hear what it is that the CEO said. Because now it gets deep. Because the one thing about it is, as our people out there keep saying, every time you question it, we pull out receipts. Mm. So what you can't do is call a woman difficult who didn't get paid for three weeks when she was working at BET. Okay. And she showed up every day because she knew it would be resolved. You can't call her difficult. You can't call a person difficult because she had to have a real conversation with a group of people saying that you know how the rumor is around here at BET and why they say we can't do shit and can't get it right. You know that's the rumor that they say. See, she she's saying that into me. She's saying, I believe in these people here. I believe in these people here. And if you don't believe, this is what she said, then either stay on the train and let's work together. And if you don't believe, get the fuck off. Now, that's some hardcore shit to say. That's some hardcore shit to say. <laughs> but you ain't saying it to no kids. You saying it to the higher ups. You ain't picking on nobody. And anybody that ever owned a business, if they heard one of the people that they pay speaking up for the business that they're working for with such pride, that's why Phil Jackson didn't say shit to Michael Jordan when he had to get in uh, Scottie Pippen's ass. Because why? He knew it was going to make him better. And he was going to let the coach coach that's on the floor. So when a man does that and speaks up, that's called motivational. Come on. When that, when a woman does that, that's called her not knowing her place. Mm. And that's the difference. And the craziest thing about it is after that very meeting, Monique and Deborah Lee, they hugged. And she said, I love you, sis. And she said, I love you back. And if you ever need to talk to me again about anything, don't hesitate to give me a call. Because she was having that conversation really on behalf of what was going on at BET from the president ain't pushing the buttons. It's the people that work underneath that person that she's having that conversation with because she says, I want to win. And she takes a hit for that. We understand. And then they spread rumors that she's difficult to work with. When you're difficult to work with, after you had the highest rated show in the history of BET at that time slot at that moment in history, and they came back and they told you that you beat Joe, uh, uh, George Lopez with little to no money for the budget, and they come back and tell you, and we're going to reduce the budget because you did so well, and now the people will know where you are. And i would never heard of that business model because people know who McDonald's is. They know who they are. But it seemed like McDonald's be advertising all the time. Oh, the goddamn, they got two for 99 nuggets. Supersize the fries. Supersize. Now, here's where the bullying comes in. See, after we got that, then there was an ask of from Monique. Monique, you're gonna perform at the uh, at the at the company function. In the Bahamas. That BET has for all the higher up. She was like, Well, what was that that you were you know, offer me to do that. Well, we were offering you the trip to come on down and 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 do it. And rub shoulders with the big wigs is what she said. Right. And Monique was like, well, this has been really busy. I mean, I've been dealing with the Oscars. I've been dealing for, I'm going to have to pass on that because I'm going to take my vacation with my family. Now, some people would say, you crazy. You got to play the game. You got to do that. When you do your job at a high level and people are, giving you an invitation when has it not been your right to say i respectfully decline or i will, will respectfully show up and when you respectfully decline if that's held against you because shortly thereafter the show went on hiatus forever <laughs> it went up the steps and we never came back out the goddamn oh. elevator with no explanation so i understand said asses and again, I tell people I'm grateful for this man sitting to my right because my tone could be a little different and my actions could be a little different because you got people fucking with my livelihood and they do it because they think they can because they're called bullies. And at Sandrew's song, I miss you. 
He hit me. He hit it with a powerful line. With, he was talking about Harriet Tubman. He said, Harriet Tubman said, I could have saved a thousand more if they knew they were slaves. And daddy. <laughs> he sucked that in. Suck it in. Suck that in. I could have saved a thousand more if they knew they were slaves. So they're individuals. Brother John Merrick, Brother Roland Martin, Brother Steve Harvey. When Steve Harvey interviews us and tells me that I'm wrong for allowing Monique to speak her truth. He says, I'm wrong for allowing her to speak her truth. Like, as a grown ass man, it's my job to not listen to this woman who's first my best friend. Secondly, she's my wife. And thirdly, she's my partner in business because I don't like to really call her a client because as it pertains to being a manager, because someone was asking earlier, how many clients do you have? Who's the first client that you had before her? I was never interested in being a manager. I became a manager. What's the first three letters in it? It's man. Because I had to man up because the people that were around her were cheating her. And at the very least, she knew that I wasn't going to cheat my own wife. And in addition to that, when you start telling an individual what's going to happen from beginning to the end before you even step in the office based upon the meeting and what's going to happen, they begin to start believing you've got some type of understanding in business in which I had because at the age of 19, I was closing deals for people 40 years old. So I know what it is to close a seven figure deal humbly. And I know what it is to close an eight figure deal humbly. So what I would say to you based upon where I come from, there are not a lot of my brothers out there that have gotten that opportunity. So for that, this is a privilege. So all the abuse and the things that people say, this is an honor to accept that. This, this is not disheartening to me personally, the things that we're dealing with, because what it's going to show to the people is that persistence overcomes resistance. And no matter how untruthful some way may be, the weight of truth is heavier than the weight of a lie. And that's why they keep having to change their story. My apologies. No, daddy, because I'm over here looking at my baby cousin that's going through it. And I know why you're going through it, because I mentioned Kim Whitley's name. Am I right? She didn't been around our family. She didn't been around our babies. And the whole time, you set me up. As after. So see, I want to explain something, though, Daddy. I'll be right. That's so why I'm grateful I got this man on my right. Because I come from a place, baby. You don't play like that. That's not how we play. Because you done been in our intimate space. You done had our babies in your arms. We don't play like that. So see, I had to connect the dots to make it make sense. And it took me some time to connect these dots. I could not do it for years. I was trying to figure out how did that information get to the magazine? I couldn't figure it out. But I kept playing in my mind, where do, and I know this cat. And then I went back to that limousine that night in Washington, D.C. And did I say some shit in the back of that car? I did. Did I say I'm digging Gerald LeVert? I did. Did I say that nigga my boyfriend, but he don't know what yet? I did. Did some of that information make it to people's eyes? It did. So as I'm watching my cousin that y'all can't see go through it, because now everything's starting to click back in. Like, wait a minute, is this the, is this the, yeah, it is. So when we talk about bullying, see, it's done in all kinds of ways. It's done in ways that you're not even aware of. So when people say to me, sit down, be humble. Let it go. Get past it. Just move on. We are. We have to move on. That's life every day. You move on every day. But when they say let it go, see, we've let shit go for so long. That's why it's been going on. Because we keep letting it go. And when you have a modern day Walter White produce an email from a man named Will Packer. But you don't produce any of the other emails. Now, when you say, because they said that there were people on this crew, the hourly people that had a problem with me. And I gotta say this humbly, daddy. And I say it humbly. One day I was walking out of the kitchen scene in almost Christmas, right? 
and I was walking into the dining room. And there were two white cameramen, and they didn't know that I could hear them. And one of the white cameramen said to the other cameraman, man, I think that's the nicest woman I've ever met in my life. And the other cameraman said, it is the nicest woman I ever met in my life who comes in here and hugs us every day. Don't nobody do that. So now you got a man reading an email saying that your hourly crew had a problem with me. So I want to address that, if I may. There was a woman on the set, and she happened to be a white woman. And I was in my trailer. And this woman came and just opened up my trailer door. Fiddle. Did not, didn't do nothing, just opened it up. That's how you did it. So I got a problem with that. Because wow. I'm a grown ass woman okay. and I got a lot of ass. So if you open up the door and that ass is out, you're going to see double asses. You ass might see out. a couple rolls of Sorry. stomach. You might see some shit. I ass might out. Come on. Come ass on, man. Out. Oh, Come give on. it to me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay. Don't do okay. It. Don't do okay. It. So she different. bust into my trailer. So I had a problem with that. So when I came out the trailer to let her know, hey, sister, check this out. Don't ever come into my trailer again without knocking. Oh, 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 oh. And she tried to brush it off. Like, go ahead with that. And that's a major problem. So at that point, when she tried to brush it off, you've got to leave from here because you're disrespectful. And you're treating me like I'm absolutely, you came up into my space. And for you not to be willing to apologize. So she and Sydney shared an email. And her email was, apologies, apologies. When I see her, I'll tell her, it was the typical, we're going to brush you off. And this is my humble opinion. Nigga, this is a low-budget movie. It's a bunch of niggas. I don't have to respect you. That was her attitude. I said to whoever was in charge at the production, she's got to leave here because she's disrespectful. That's the woman that Will Packer is referring to. But he won't talk about the other woman who is his uh, assistant who then walked into Monique's trailer while Robin was doing work for Monique and began to question her about what is she doing. Meanwhile, Robin's a grown ass woman too. So grown, she was old enough to be that young lady's mother. I put it to her like that. I'm, I'm sorry, Break Dad. Down. That's how much of a kid she was to us. Exactly. And when you have a conversation with an individual who then begins to not ask did that happen in that way with their assistant but they beginning to tell you about overlook this because what we're going to do is this it's a feeling of as he referred to himself as the head nigga in charge and i can get it done don't worry about it. and it's like listen brother you the same cat that wanted to argue or not argue but you call yourself the head nigga in charge if you're the head nigga in charge, but you can't get Monique transportation after she's worked 20 hour days and you're going to have to go back to Universal and ask, can you get her transportation? But you're the head nigga in charge, though. Mm. And when you put the emails out, where should they go just so they can see? We're going to have to put the emails out, the thread of all of them. Y'all can come to the Instagram page, The Real Mo Worldwide, because what happens is we're asking people. Put your money where your mouth is. If I'm all of these things, prove it. Prove it. Because oftentimes we know how magical the platform is of TV and radio. We know the magic. We know if somebody say it, it's fucking true. We ain't got to research it. We ain't got to check it. We just know it's true. Y'all know the running joke. Y'all know I ain't get ready to say nothing new. If you want to get a nigga to find out some information, put it in the book. They know we ain't going to find out. That's the running joke. So when y'all come back with all of these, well, I heard this, and then y'all start talking like it's fact. That's when we have to say, well, let's show you the proof. And somebody said, well, we don't get it. What is this about? Netflix, Oprah, what's she mad at? We're not mad at nobody. We're just telling the truth, and it all ties in together. Because when you do have people who are out juggernauts, Oprah, Lee, and Tyler, and they sit back, and they don't speak on what they know is not true. And then they agree with what we're saying. Well, see, when Netflix comes in with the lowball offer, well, guess what? We heard you too. Demanding and difficult. 
who we ain't gotta pay you. See, for me, it all ties in together because it just wasn't Netflix low offer. They've been low offers, period. And then they got even lower because the rumor was you're difficult and demanding. We'll let you starve and almost make you beg. When you hear our sister Kathy Griffith say, I had to go back and ask him, can I please have my job and I'll take half my salary. And But I think the difference is to also what they try to make it seem like is when you're a comedian, Monique got a chance to be Nikki Parker based upon her comedic prowess. And the world didn't know that it was a time where it was almost like, who is this woman? Who, where did she come from? Well, she came from the comedy clubs. And when you're doing a play, people don't see you doing the play, but all of a sudden your theater now puts you into the realm of uh, 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 television. So when you're a comedian, a lot of your work is done out of sight unless it's in sight. So she's never stopped doing comedy uh, for the last 28 years. That's that's the, the rumor. And more so than that, when you have people that say, well, now Monique wants you to get with her, but what has she ever done with the black community? Well, and under the community at large. See, uh, what people don't know about is the big mouth that she has that she used to speak up for the people that you refer to as extras on the show when she was doing the Parkers because they would be there, you know, all day long, 12 hours a day doing a shoot. And they gave them cookies and water until she said, listen, guys, what y'all doing? They are people. How are you going to give them cookies and water? Give them the food that we don't eat. Be and let them eat before us because we are not eating the food. We typically have it ordered, and y'all gonna let all that hot food go to waste with them sitting there. Why y'all playing? Come on. Y'all didn't see that. So y'all don't see when she tours around and she's doing a comedy date and she finds a school to go to to talk to the students. Why? Because there are no cam cameras around. It's the genuine aspect of who she is. You don't know how many old women's feet that she has rubbed lotion on them that she did not know. See, y'all don't see that when we go and have gone into the nursing home that didn't smell so well. And then we get friends to come out like Rodney Perry, and now he put money in the pot and we having him. Y'all don't know that aspect about her. So when you say, what has she done? You don't know about the comedians that walk up to her when she's in the club who say, I'm an aspiring comedian. Can I just have, you know, I, I just want to talk to you. You said, I'm gonna do better than that. Let me give you five minutes before my show. You really about it? Then come back tomorrow. I'm going to get for real. Y'all don't see that. So this right here is not an act. And what happens is when you go to old boy rolling out and when we put it out, you're going to get a chance to see how we act when no one is looking. And that's the most important thing. When you see how someone is, when nobody else is watching, just check out the receipts. Just check out the receipts and also we need to address something because it, i was getting ready to bust out laughing you have some people saying you know monique is irrelevant she's no longer relevant but they seem to stay in the podcast the whole show the whole show they seem to be on all of my videos on instagram all of them. they seem to tweet me every day so i'm like well goddamn what am i to a relevant motherfucker if i'm all listening to somebody that's irrelevant God damn it, Craig, how come every time I'm in the kitchen? You in the kitchen. You in the kitchen. No, I like fat bat. Talk to it. Oh mo. Hit it. You need to get a goddamn job, Craig. Chitterling. Come on. Let's go to the lines. Hey, my baby, you on with Monique and Sydney. Where you calling from and what's your name? Um, I'm, I'm Freddie calling from Missouri. Hey, Freddie. Hey, Freddie. I have been I've been following the whole and watching this. And Monique, my aunt, I used to watch Queen of Comedy when I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and I, learned a, I learned a whole lot of things. <laughs> and you have been the Parker. So the, when, when the Parker comes on, I, I leave work. I'm like, I have things to do. <laughs> so with this whole situation, I think, I've, been, I've, been, I've, I've read every article, I've been following everything that you said. And everything that everyone else has said, and and talking to people that I know, people at work, and friends, I think that your 
talent speaks for itself so much because in precious the ability that you have to call up these emotions from somebody and get everyone just like I know that woman in some way or form, no matter what color that you are. Mm-hmm. So your talent it speaks for itself and it's so inspirational in so many ways. But I think the con- the, the consensus of people that I've spoken to is that it's not that what you are it's not that the cause of the the inequality of pay is wrong. What you are saying is absolutely right. All of that is correct. I think that what people are saying, because we all have these insights into the industry that from our point of view, from the public eye, for, for us, everyone has an opinion about how what someone's career should look like, because everyone feels like they know what a good actor is and what a bad actor is. Mm-hmm. And I think that what a lot of people that I've spoken to have been saying is, well, if Monique had done all of this, if maybe maybe we could have pushed past the Netflix thing, then Monique can, duck, can try to get more money on the next special, or Monique could try to parlay bringing the Parkers back or something like that. And I think that that it's this element that everyone is thinking about, about the game that's being played all the time that we see everyone play. And I guess I sort of sit in the middle of those two things because what, the, what you are saying, and I think that for everyone, who, for everyone who has something bad to say about Sydney, I just think that you have to really, really look at the people around you and look at, 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 at the one person will go to bat for you every single time. That's the person who who knows your thoughts or you know them. And I think that the love that the two of you have is so incredible. And I personally, I would hope and wish and think that after this situation comes to a head, that it's possible for us to be able to talk about what women do women's inequality in pay, black women's inequality in pay, but then that we can also look at how do we get you back into a position where you can say these things on a bigger platform. And I guess a question that I have, and I, I had an example, uh, I, all the stuff that you're saying of all those women, I actually understand. But I guess my question is, what's the next step and the next strategy to get you to the place that you have the platform and the support to be saying all of these things. Because I wish, I mean, who, somebody, if you need to bring the Parkers back like ever, like all, all these other shows are coming back on. And I think that I would, your voice, your presence, your power, your talent, no, the, the only reason people are talking about this is because it's not, it's, it's because of the cause, but it's because you are such a phenomenal woman and you can feel that. And I don't think that you're back, like you said, you're not angry at all these people. But you know what, baby? And, and, and I hear everything you've seen and I appreciate you, my baby, because that's not called a fan. That's called a family member. Come on. Because that's coming from your heart. And you saying, sis, what, what can we do? But I want to answer something for you. When people say, well, she should have taken it and then hoped for the next one. You have to say, at what point do you get it on this one? Because being in the industry for almost 30 years, why do we as women of color keep hearing, just take it and get it on the next one? And I've heard that for years of my career. See, I heard that so long, even when People say, oh, well, there was a time she was hot and relevant when the Parkers was number one. I heard, we'll get him on the next time. Mm -hmm. When Monique's Fat Chance was number one, not one year, not two years, but three. We'll get him on the next time. When you do a movie called Precious that makes a world impact, but then I have to hear, we'll get him on the next time. 
So for the people that you feel like my baby, you're in the middle of, and you say, well, I really don't know how to respond. A response that I give them is, when is it this time? Because if we keep accepting the next time, then you start hearing about the black actresses and comedians that died broke because they were all waiting for the next time. Moms Mabley was waiting for the next time. Mel Carter was waiting for the next time. Eartha Kitt was waiting for the next time. And if you look closely, there has been no time ever where there has been a woman of color who has had a career like an Ellen, like a, a Rosie, a Roseanne, a Steve Harvey, a uh, Kevin Hart, where a uh, Richard Pryor, where you get the aesthetics of fame, but you get paid with compliments and not money. And that's the difference. But we thank you so much for calling, my brother. Thank you, baby. We love you, honey. Okay, love you, Because my baby, he was like, I, I got support to say. See, we appreciate these conversations and we appreciate the ones that's willing to hear it all the way through. Mm -hmm. Because I used to be guilty, and I have to share this. I used to be guilty of setting in my mind what I believed it to be. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing you could say to me to change it. But I'm grateful that I've learned how to say, let me hear it all the way through before I base my opinion, because I may be shortchanging myself and the person that I'm judging. So what we would ask for everybody is listen with an open heart and an open ear and an open mind because it could save your life. Because the same things that you support today, you will succumb to tomorrow. It's that it's just that it's just that simple. This, because you think it doesn't affect you to you, I'm gonna tell you right now, that's how Spider-Man got messed up. How'd he do place. it, baby? He let the goddamn <laughs> criminal go by. That's what he did. And what did he do? And what did he do? He he got his granddaddy. He got him. Mm. And if he had to just stop the problem, Come on. it wouldn't have just been him and Aunt May. Come on. <clears throat> now. Okay. Now, okay, because when you bring it home to the Spider-Man shit. Spider-Man. But don't nobody want to say about nothing about nobody that. Nobody want to talk about that. Come on. And, and, and somebody said, because um, I want to explain it, because this is why we do this show. Because it's called Monique and Sydney's Open Relationship, and it allows us and you to be open and honest. That's it. Unapologetically. Even the trolls. We love you, trolls. And and because <laughs> because y'all y'all build up viewership. Yeah. And y'all stay the whole show. And you know what somebody told me one time? They said, "Listen, you gonna have viewers that love the shit out of you, and you gonna have viewers that hate the shit out of you. But both of them gonna tune in every time you have something to say." So. Somebody just put something in that was really good. They said, if she fights so hard for the woman's movement, how does she explain calling her husband daddy? <laughs> for the same reason that I call her mama. That, that's what we do. That's called a boom. Is that I, had, what? I had to boom him, daddy. He's going to take Roland Martin. He's going to try to say that he gave you credit for the boom, the ether. Oh, I got to give it back because... You don't want to take his boom. I don't want to take it. Don't Roland take Martin, boom. I want to apologize for taking your boom because you used the word evil oh. in all letters, That's in it. all caps. And y'all know I'm not good with big words, so I looked the shit up. <laughs> evil is strong. It's strong. Let's okay. <laughs> y'all be careful and be unafraid to stand because our babies are watching us. And what will we give to the generation that we'll never have an opportunity to lay our eyes on? And for those of you who say you are right about the inequality, but could you have done it a different way? Well, what I will say to you is this. If you follow the inequality, no matter which way you do it, we're going to all end up at the same place. I'm going to say it again. Mm. No matter, just follow. They say follow the money. If you follow the inequality, we're all going to end up at the same place, despite if you got there by bus, by bike, you walk, you drove. It's the same thing. So don't ridicule the method. Ridicule the reason that the method had to be implemented in the first place. Mm, come on, y'all. We want to thank y'all.
We want to thank y'all for every heart, every ear, every mind, because you could have been doing anything else right now. But you said, I'm going to go join Monique and Sydney and see what they're saying. That's what's up. So please tell a friend, tell another friend, and tell 10 more friends to keep joining us on Monique and Sydney's open relationship where there's truly no judgment and our hearts can get healed. So like my daddy always says, the man is like a parachute. It is no good unless it's open. We love y'all. For free. Mwah. And thank all 5.9 thousand. Now it's 6,000. 6, of you for tuning in. So y'all tune, make sure y'all tune in next week because we're talking about some more shit. Some more. Okay, thank we love y'all, my babies. Mwah. No, Daddy.